It's a new guitar. Squire. Cavernita. Baritone, paranormal, whatever. Super excited to check this out. Okay. Got camera. Came from Blues Angel Music. Found this knife in my wife's car. It wasn't hers. Probably was. It's probably my father in law's. But it's not bad. A little dull. Thing in the back still swinging in it. Now, normally, the advice is to let the guitar acclimate to the temperature, but. It's kind of a mild summer here in Oregon at times. It was really hot for a while, but right now it's pretty mild. So I feel like the guitar box feels the same temperature as the room. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume that's safe to open. If this was a much more expensive guitar, I would not do this. Ooh, okay. Like a little swag bag from the folks at Blue Angel Music in Florida. Thanks for having this in stock. I get a little Sticker with the this guy, little bird on it. Oop! Ooh, I get some uh, pick in your pockets, some punch out picks. Get a nice cleaning cloth for your instrument. Business card. That's handy. And the bag it came in. Let's unbox this thing, shall we? Let's move the, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna go to, uh... oh, I can't change it, whatever. Okay, so we got bubble wrap. Oh no, we got the peanuts, the wretched peanuts. I hate packing peanuts. I hate my life. I've made an enormous mess. Here it is. It's in there. And I guess I put enough... I guess they put enough bubble wrap on it, you know. As far as, like, unboxing videos go, this is definitely the messiest, because now my room is full of packing peanuts. And it's going to be a pain in the butt to put them back. <laughs> the knife again very carefully now always point the knife away from you if you're on uh, cutting stuff okay here we go wow the wood looks good frick what is that there's like some kind of mark on the guitar, some kind of line right there. Don't know if that shows up. Super in tune. I'm gonna tune this guitar up, but let me, let's inspect it together, shall we? The wood looks good. I'm actually surprised because this appears to be one Two, three, four. Four pieces of wood, so not bad, not great, not terrible. So you get one out here, one out here, and then one, and then two? Wait, one, two, three, four? Why would they do that? Let's 
see on the back. One, two, wait, one, two, three, four. I can count, I promise. But it looks good. The string ferrules are seated nicely. Um, the finish looks nice. There's, oh, the dreaded input cup. Okay, so this is the thing that most people were complaining about build quality wise. And just smacked my lamp. You can see that it doesn't sit in there very well. We'll have to fix that. Neck looks good. There's a bit of, there's like a light bit of flame. There's a few ripples. Um, fingerboard looks fine. The fret ends feel good. The laurel fingerboard is quite parched. Um, hardware looks fine. I'm sure I'll be changing the switch out. Tuners look good. Neck feels great. It's pretty small. For some reason, I expected it to be really big, but I guess it's only 27 inch scale length. So let's plug it in. I'm gonna stop recording, move these packing peanuts out of the way, put a strap on and, or sit down or something, I don't know. All right, the peanuts have been disposed of. Let's tune this bad boy up. So this thing has a 27 inch scale length. It's got two Fender designed P90s. They say they're single coils, but they're also P90s. I'll have to take them apart and see. Let's hear what it sounds like. We got the ACS1 on the pedal board down here. I'm just gonna leave the stock strings on here. We'll throw the string joy strings on later. These feel fine. They don't feel nasty. I think one thing that's in order is these um, I don't know if you can see it. The saddle screws are sticking up quite a bit. So I think shimming the neck so I can lift those bad boys up a little bit would be nice. Get a little pitch back. This thing definitely, desperately needs lemon oil on the fingerboard. It's real bad. The input jack needs to get fixed. It's sticking out awkwardly. And some people have uh, already done replacements and stuff on it. And those videos seem to be reasonable. Although it does look good from a distance like this, and I don't want to change it, but I don't know. I don't think I could live with this if I can only do the straight plug. The right angle is like just too short. Okay, let's hear it. This is the first time I'm hearing it, so let's go. So in tune. I think the neck width is a little, it feels a little chunkier than a normal electric, which I guess is fine because the strings are bigger. The strings feel big, but on this guitar, the tension's really not that bad. Um, it's, it's, it's like not, it's like pleasantly, it's pleasant. Like the strings feel big, but they're definitely not unmanageable. Um, and I like this kind of, this 27 inch scale length a lot. I think the pickup sound, the neck is pretty big sounding, uh, pretty pretty dark, but it's also got a decent amount of clarity, which I like. I think the bridge is a bit mid-heavy, um, so that that might take some getting used to. Might have to dial in uh, my overdrives a little bit different. But let's uh, let's hear some drive from the Jackson Audio Golden Boy. I'll turn the comp let me turn the compressor on first to hear that. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so that's been a first look at this Squire Cabernita Baritone Telecaster, whatever the hell this thing is. I gotta say, I'm impressed. Um, I think the bridge sound is probably probably needs some work. Um, but I think the pickup is really close to the strings. Let me see if I can show you. So um, I don't know if you can see it on the camera. I'll zoom way in, super zoom in post so you can see it. Oh, neck pickup. A little bit further from the bridge, bridge pickups is pretty, or a bit further from the strings, bridge pickups really close. The overall, I'd say out of first impressions, I think this thing's a solid seven and a half to eight out of 10. I think the input jack is gonna be a problem. I can probably pound it in further if I want it to make it look good, but I think that's not really the issue. My issue is, is that I can't plug anything in. So I might have to swap it out for one of the electro socket things or whatever, but those don't look great. One of the problems I'm seeing fit and finish wise is there's a big gap between the pickup and the body. So the routes are pretty large. So I'm, that's kind of disappointing, but you can't really fix anything about that. Again, I can't really complain too much though for a $420, $430 guitar. It's great. Um, no skunk stripe on the back of the neck, just pure maple there. Um, truss rod adjustment is way up at the top. Vintage style tuners work fine. The bridge works, seems to work fine. Um, the knobs are nice. They have like uh, set screws in them. That's pretty handy. Uh, nice to see on a Squire. I mean, it feels solid, looks fine. Four pieces of wood ain't a big deal. And honestly, they did a pretty good job of like covering up the gaps. They didn't put one straight down the middle. They have, you know, a seam here and a seam way up here, but you get this whole, there's a pretty big chunk in the middle here, which... I like so thumbs up for that the neck looks okay I don't have it's not like the Starcaster I had which was just spectacular but this is more than fine so okay so um, here is the Cabernita Baritone Telecaster and I've got it on my little Ikea shelf that's next to my desk and all of that stuff and I was just going through <laughs> this looks so bad this desk tour time. Um, I have like a billion different like old pots and switches and stuff. Some of which I have never used like this when I got a Mustang switch um, for my Jaguar base um, when I really needed a Jaguar switch. So this is three positions. I've opened up the Squire Cabernita Baritone Telecaster and I said I was going to film more of the process, and I didn't. I got impatient, and I opened it up without filming, so sorry about that. Let's discuss the components used and their quality and all of that stuff. So in the control cavity, you can see there is no shielding paint. Now, this is common on Telecasters. Telecasters have smaller control cavities with a lot of wood. There's wood on the front um, because this is a rear-loading cavity. So shielding isn't usually a big deal because all the cables are kind of right next to each other whereas on like a jazz master over there or a strat you have this big plastic thing that's covering like half of the guitar which doesn't offer as much protection um than wood wood has some water in it it i guess can make its own faraday cage a little bit or we just don't deal with it <laughs> when it comes time to shield this so i could shield this cavity that would help a little bit i guess with some of the noise it's not that noisy though so I don't really know what I'm going to do with it exactly. Electronics, let's talk about that. So the switch is really interesting. Um, it's just your, it's a normal, it appears to be a normal three-way switch and it just feels a little bit soft. You know, it's not as like clicky as some. But then I found out that there's there's this plastic thing down here, right? This black plastic thing right in there, all like super zoom in post so you can see it. And the, the thing is, is that it has little like grabber things where the post can go into, right? So it's not being grabbed, and then you push it over here, and it gets grabbed by the little plastic tongs. Now, this is fine, but the problem is is that over time, that's definitely going to cause dust, and the great enemy of these switches is dust, because dust will get trapped. So if you leave it in the bridge position, you can see right through the contacts, right? So there's a contact here and a contact there in the middle, and, uh, whoop, and uh, the great enemy is that dust will get will settle on those, and then when you go to put it in the middle position, they're not being forced together as hard, or you put it to the other position, and again, there's just 
the dust can get in between and cause issues that like horrible crackling or just the switch not working thing. And that's why I like blade switches a lot better than toggles. Toggles have issues. Toggles feel better when you flick them. They're just great. Not this one. This one feels like crap. Um, but that's the big problem. So I really want guitar manufacturers to start putting sealed toggle switches. I'm, I'm going to start a campaign for that. Now, this all parts one, um, it, you can see that it doesn't really have a plastic thing in there. And the way that it stays in position is when you push it over to the side, get a good angle on here, there's actually like a flat edge. And so it just, it pushes on, it gets on top of this, this metal piece here, and it stays that way like that. So you can see that as I move it there, right? And, and then same thing on the other side, this, it feels more positive. And um, there's just a lot more like return force. So just uh, just when it clicks into the middle, it's just nice. Just feels very solid. I guess the switch also hasn't been installed on the guitar, so it feels really, really good. Um, now, one thing of concern is usually sometimes the hole sizes um, are not very good. But okay, so we got room. But let's test this switch against the other one. And it fits in nicely, so that's good news. Now, this switch was installed in a funny orientation. It was installed like this. Now, that's fine because it lets you flick the switch forward or backwards for neck and bridge, which it makes sense on a fender. But the <laughs> these things are awful close to the edge of the um, cavity there, and I don't like that. So I'm going to orient the switch like this or something like that, and that way there's a lot more space for the wires. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace this switch with this switch with this one and orient it in a different direction. So it'll be up and down instead of side to side. The pots. So let's talk about these guys. So one thing that's nice to see is that they did put um, insulation on these wires or heat shrink tubing connecting the capacitor to the pot. That's nice to see as it keeps, you know, shorts to a minimum. They also didn't try to bend the leg all the way over because you can't really on a small pod. They used a nice little wire there. These are, um, interestingly, they're solid shaft, which I didn't expect. But I guess that makes sense since the knobs have set screws um, and they're, you know, the the good type of knobs. I don't like the push-on ones. Push-on ones suck because uh, they just fall off and they break pots. These are 500K, which is good to see. Um, it appears that the Chinese factory where this is crafted, they like to use mini pots. Um, I have my Marauder was constructed there, um, and it has mini pots. Um, but the Starcaster, which I reviewed previously, was made in Indonesia and it had big pots in it for some reason. And my Jazzmaster, which was made in Indonesia a few years earlier, that one had mini pots in it, which broke very fast. So anyway. These pots are mini pots. They're 500K, which is, I'm glad to see the right value is being used on a P90 guitar. And I can kind of tell, you know, they're pretty, it's pretty open sounding. So I'll be moving forward with 500K pots. One issue though, as usual with Far Eastern made guitars is that I'll just move this uh, washer out of the way. If I try to put this pot in, it does not go in all the way. Um, yeah, so the hole is too small. So like the Starcaster, I will have to drill out these holes. I'm going to try to get a better bit for doing this because on the Starcaster, I kind of effed it up a little bit. Plus, this wood is really, really thin here, and I don't want to do anything bad to it. So the Starcaster, I kind of chipped off some of the finish around the area. So I'm going to masking tape over it, go backwards with the drill quite a bit, and then I'm going to use a really, you know, I'm going to tr try to go slow and be very, very careful when I'm drilling through these holes. So, um, as far as the joints look, most of them aren't terrible. I'm going to try to, let me see if I can get in here real tight. Um, on the pots, they look pretty good in terms of joints. I don't really see many issues. The switch, some of the joints are questionable, like this neck pickup wire, the way it's grounded to, um, the way it's grounded to the switch looks a little weird, and this the bridge pickup solder is like not, they didn't like solder it into the hole, they soldered it next to the hole, <laughs> which is really strange. So that gives me great confidence, thanks Squire. I don't know, I think I think the electronics are fine, they're a lot better than the Starcaster, but overall I'd still have to say that they're not um, the best. Yeah, I, I wanna change out the stuff because I think this guitar sounds good with the current pickups and the wood, it sustains great, all of that stuff, but it would be great to have um, 
just better better pots because these probably won't last a long time a better switch that isn't going to create a bunch of dust in the cavity which will be bad for the pots and the switch um and i don't know maybe it's not going to generate that much dust it just to me it seems like a poor design this thing honestly i think i could fix some of the issues because you can see that it's seated in and i tighten this nut down all the way and it's still like sticking out there like that i don't know if you can let's see if we can get the focus yeah so i think if i could pound it down with a hammer um, I might take it over to my father-in-law's and whack on it with a hammer for a little bit and see. And I think that might help get it flatter. I kind of want to avoid buying a new one if I can. But at the same time, I don't want to have a crappy... I'm going to replace the jack element itself, but I think I could keep using this cup if I modify it in a way that um, works. So who knows? Maybe I, you know, we'll see. I, I might just buy a new one. So I'm going to check on some of these, you know, things. It's good to check all of this stuff before you run out and buy a bunch of new components. Um, all of this wiring, aside from the pickup wires and the ground wire coming from the bridge, which is this guy, I'm going to throw out all the wiring aside from the pickup leads. I could even replace those, honestly. Um, and the ground wire to the bridge, because I don't really care about that. Um, that just, you know, it doesn't, it's not really a big part of the sound. Um, I think changing some of this stuff out will help the guitar to work better, last longer, be a better instrument. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for more. Um, I'll do a full mod video. I want to take off the finish on the neck, and I will try to document whatever um, processes I do to modify it. I'm going to do some new strap buttons for my Dunlop Dual Design Strap Locks, which I do love. These things are great. You push the little button, and they come off. And plus, the um, buttons themselves can accept regular straps, which is super nice. So, um, that's been a look at the internals of the Baritone Cabernita Telecaster. Hopefully this video was uh, fun or interesting. Uh, help me out on the YouTube algorithm. Hit that like button, subscribe, turn on notifications, um, all of that stuff. Subscribe so you can watch more updates on this boy uh, that's a big thing got some more stuff in the pipe so stay tuned all right i'm out